This focaccia is similar to a Genovese style, thin and soft, but with a crunchy crust and a traditional topping of onions. Here's the recipe. To start, I'm using bread flour with a 12.7% protein content. This will help provide a little bit of chew in the focaccia, but you can definitely sub in all-purpose flour if you want a bread that's even more tender. The measurement here is 500 grams, or 3 cups plus a teaspoon. Next is an optional ingredient, diastatic malt powder. And you can find it on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. This ingredient does a few things, but most importantly, for me at least, it helps the bread brown more in the oven. And I've always struggled with this, so diastatic malt powder is my quote-unquote cheat at home. 8 grams or 2.5 teaspoons go into the bowl. Whisk the flour and malt powder together so that the two ingredients are evenly combined. Then grab 350 grams or 1.5 cups of slightly warm water and add most of it to the bowl. Reserve about 50 grams or a quarter cup of it and use that water to bloom the dry active yeast that's needed for this recipe. It doesn't matter what brand you use as long as the yeast is still within the use by date. 3 grams or a half teaspoon is what you'll need for this recipe. And if you only have instant yeast or quote unquote rapid rise yeast, no problem at all. You'll just have to add that later on in the process and don't worry, <laughs> I'll tell you when to do that. The bowl with the flour, malt, and water gets fastened onto the mixer along with the paddle attachment. These ingredients are mixed just until they come together, nothing more. Just a heads up, you may need to stop the machine and do a little bit of scraping here. Sometimes the ingredients like to wander up the insides of the bowl instead of coming together to form the dough. If you don't have one of these fancy machines, just mix it all by hand. It is totally doable, I promise. By now, the dough should look something like this. It's roughly come together, but not at all ready to be kneaded. A step called auto lease comes first, and this is very important for a few reasons, mainly because it helps jumpstart gluten formation, which in turn reduces the overall kneading time. But in addition, auto lease also helps produce a smooth and extensible dough. To auto lease dough, all you have to do is cover the bowl with plastic wrap, or better yet, a reusable shower cap like this one here, and let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, time's up. The dough's not going to look or feel a heck of a lot different than before, but trust me, there's a lot going on here, and this step is really effective. Grab your bloomed yeast and add it to the dough, then reattach the bowl to the mixer along with a dough hook and knead the dough on medium-low speed until the extra liquid is absorbed. This should take about five minutes or so. Oh, and if you're using instant dry yeast, go ahead and drop that in right now. Gradually add 15 grams or one tablespoon of kosher salt to the bowl, and once it's totally incorporated, begin drizzling in 28 grams or two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Do this a little bit at a time so the dough has a chance to absorb the oil between each addition. If you add all the oil at once, the dough will have a hard time coming together and you'll most likely make a mess. Okay, once the salt and the oil has been absorbed, knead the dough for another 5 to 10 minutes on medium speed. At this point, it should start to look kind of smooth on the surface, something like this. Grab a dough scraper or maybe a plastic spatula and scrape the dough out onto a lightly floured work surface. Flour your hands and the dough, then form it into a ball. You can pick it up and tuck the dough underneath of itself, like I'm doing here. You can also place it on the counter and work the dough in a circular motion while applying a little bit of pressure from the sides. Either way works like a charm. Place the dough ball in a lightly greased bowl, then cover it and let the dough rest until it's doubled in size. For me, that's usually 3-4 to four hours. Next, grab a 13 by 18 inch pan. This is also called a half sheet pan. Generously grease it with about two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. The amount you add should be borderline excessive. Now use your hands to spread out the oil, making sure the surface is completely covered, including all four sides of the pan. I placed my covered bowl in my oven with the oven light on. Now this provides a slightly warmer environment that's perfect for fermentation and proofing and speeds up the process if you're running tight on time. Here's what the dough should look like when it's ready to go. It's doubled in size, gassy, but it's not deflated. Use a bench scraper and carefully transfer the dough to the oiled sheet pan, making sure to leave little behind. Oil your hands with a little bit from the pan and begin pressing the dough out so it's nice and flat. It's important to spread it out evenly, and a helpful tip is to rotate the pan every so often when pushing the dough toward the corners. You may find that lifting the dough up and stretching it like pizza dough is effective as well. I use both methods. At this point, the focaccia dough is not going to be stretchy enough to fill the sheet pan. That'll come later. Patience is a virtue here. Cover the pan up and let the dough rest for 10 to 15 minutes and then come back to it and stretch a little more. Eventually, the dough will relax and you'll be able to fill the pan from corner to corner. 
cover the pan again, and let the dough rest for about an hour. I'm using that old oven trick to speed up my proof. This is the perfect time to prepare some sort of topping for your focaccia. In Genoa, spring onions are a traditional topping, but it's winter where I live and they're not available right now. In an effort to replicate those flavors, I'm gonna use a combination of sweet Vidalia onions and a delicate green onion or scallion. A mandolin comes in really handy here. It'll slice those larger onions thin and evenly, but if you don't have one, a knife will do just fine. If you're using a mandolin, please be careful. It's very easy to cut yourself, especially your fingertips. For reference, I'm using about four to five ounces of Vidalia onion and about five scallions. After an hour or so, your dough should look like this, slightly puffy, but not completely doubled in height. Generously oil the focaccia with more extra virgin olive oil. Make sure you add an even amount all over the surface then dimple the dough using just the tips of your fingers. A good method is to work from one side to the other, making sure to press down to the bottom of the pan when dimpling. You'll notice that the oil will start to fill in those holes, which is exactly what is supposed to happen. Cover the dough again and preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius. For convection ovens, go 25 degrees Fahrenheit or 14 degrees Celsius cooler like I'm doing here. Top the focaccia with the onions right before it goes in the oven. Shoot for an even application all over the surface of the dough from edge to edge. Now, if you add a heavier topping like this any earlier, the weight of those onions might keep the dough from rising, so it's done at the very last minute. A little bit more extra virgin olive oil never hurts, and don't forget to season the focaccia with a little bit of salt. A flaky variety would be best here, but I don't have any on hand, so fine sea salt will have to do. Bake the focaccia for 18 to 20 minutes on the top rack directly on a baking steel or corderite stone. This will give you the best chance of getting a super crispy crust. If you don't have a stone, don't worry, and to carry on, your bread will turn out delicious. Best practice is to set a timer for 10 minutes and then rotate the focaccia halfway through the bake. When done, your focaccia should look something like this. Now note, a wet topping like onions will inhibit some surface browning, so an untopped focaccia will have more color, of course. This bread looks absolutely delicious, nonetheless. A quick check of the bottom reveals a beautifully golden brown and ultra crispy crust. Man, that looks incredible. Quick shout out to Baking Steel here. You guys produce an awesome product, and no, this video is not sponsored, but I'll leave a link to their website down below. Carefully slide the focaccia out onto some sort of baking rack and let it rest for a few minutes or until the bread is cool enough to handle. All right, it's been five minutes, so let's cut into it and take a closer look at everything. That looks spot on to me. The interior is riddled with tons of holes in various shapes all over the place. Looking at the top, the onions are cooked through and tender but not burnt. The focaccia surface, including the sides, look properly baked. The bottom is where it's at for me, though. That just looks impressive. Time for a taste test. Cut this up into some pieces. Yeah. Give it a try. Mm. The bottom of this crust is super crunchy, but the inside is still nice and tender. Getting some really, really delicious sweet notes from the cooked onions. Mm. Delicious focaccia. Give the recipe a try. I hope you like it. Catch you next time.